Whether we are talking about the spread of disease or the spread of information, understanding the underlying network is key to understanding and controlling the spread. SAS Analytics software provides a number of tools to help you. In this video, I'll show you how to use SAS Visual Analytics on VIA to explore networks. To explain the concept of nodes and links, I'm going to use the degrees of Kevin Bacon. This is a little game where you pick an actor and see how many links you have to get to to get to Kevin Bacon. So I'm going to start with Kerry Washington, and she was in Little Fires Everywhere with Reese Witherspoon, who was in Legally Blonde with Luke Wilson, who was in My Dog Skip with Kevin Bacon. So you can see here we jumped three links and through two other nodes. Here nodes are entities, in this case actors or people, and the links are the movies they were in together. Of course it's never that simple because Kerry Washington was also in The Last King of Scotland with James McAvoy, who was in X-Men with Kevin Bacon. You can see there's a shorter path between Kerry Washington and Kevin Bacon with only two links and through one other node. And there were probably many, many other, maybe hundreds of other paths. And you can see it becomes very complex very quickly in a real network. That's why you need network analytics to help you analyze and make the best decisions. SAS Visual Analytics deals with hierarchical or ungrouped network analysis. Hierarchical is pretty self-explanatory. There's a defined hierarchy, which could be organizational structure, or it could be geographic, and if it's geographic, you can map it. I'm going to focus on ungrouped networks. These have the required roles of a source and a target. They also have the optional roles with the size and color of the node and the width and color of the links. There are a number of network analysis metrics that are created automatically for you. These include disconnected network ID, community, and four centrality measures, reach centrality, closeness centrality, stress centrality, and betweenness centrality. I'll go through each of these individually with an example. Here is some notional sample data that we can imagine is a bunch of people who work at different care centers. We also have information on their face-to-face -face conversations, the duration of how long each person was talking and how long each person was listening in those face-to-face -face conversations. We could imagine that in these conversations, we know that disease can be spread and obviously information can be spread when one person is talking to another person face-to-face. In the left pane of visual analytics, I can select my objects pane and I can search for network and I can drag my network analysis onto my canvas. In my right pane, you see my roles and for source, I'm going to use talker and for target, I'm going to use listener. And now I can see I have a large network actually two different disconnected networks. And I can get a disconnected network ID by selecting color, disconnected network ID. Now you see I have my zero and my one. I can look at who these people are under my options. I can select data labels and maybe I want to make those 14 and bold. And I see that everyone is connected except over here I have Chuck and Wilson. They're on a separate island and they are not face to face talking with any of these other people. I'll go ahead and uncheck my data labels, go back to my roles pane, and I'm going to replace the disconnected network ID with community. Now I can see I have five communities, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, in blue, yellow, green, purple, and orange. And even though some of my members are connected, they are in separate communities because some are much more highly connected. So we have four really highly connected clusters and then a completely separate cluster, the cluster 0. 
To illustrate the centralities, I'm going to do some filtering here. So I'll go to my Filter tab, add a new filter, and I'm also going to add a filter on the duration. So I'm only going to include face-to-face -face conversations for 10 minutes or more. You see this has reduced this down to a more manageable size and I can move these around. I select an item and slide it. Now that I have an easily viewable shape, I'm going to select my reach centrality. Reach centrality is the number of links between a node and the farthest connected node on the shortest path. The range is from zero to any whole number greater than or equal to zero. In our example, we see that there are between one and two links between all of these. So if we roll over this little dot, which is only has a reach centrality of only one, we see that's Olivia. All of the others have a reach centrality of two. That means that Olivia is only one link away from every other node in this network, whereas these others can be up to two links away from other nodes, other individuals in this network. Next, I'll look at closeness centrality. Closeness centrality is normalized where one indicates the highest closeness and zero indicates the lowest closeness. It ranges from zero to one on a normalized scale. I can hover over and see that Olivia has a closeness centrality of one. Otis has a closeness centrality of 0.75. Olive has a closeness centrality of 0.25, etc. Next, I'll look at stress centrality. This again is normalized between 0 and 1, and stress centrality indicates the nodes that are crossed the most frequently. And we see again, Olivia is the winner here. She has the highest stress centrality, and several have a stress centrality of zero, which is the lowest. This is a normalized scale. It is not the number of links. It is a normalized scale from the highest, the node that is crossed most frequently, to the lowest, the nodes that are crossed least frequently. And finally, I'll look at betweenness centrality. Betweenness centrality is very similar. The nodes that are crossed most frequently get the highest score, but this also accounts for multiple paths between nodes. So in summary, the reach ranges uh, from zero to infinity, the closeness ranges from zero to one, the stress ranges from zero to one, and the betweenness ranges from zero to one. Those are all on a normalized scale. But we can see in this example, if we were interested in the person who is most important to spread, whether it's the spread of disease, the spread of information, which person would you pick? We see it's not even a toss up. We can see that one particular node has the lowest reach, the highest closeness, the highest stress, and the highest betweenness. If we roll over our nodes, we can see that Olivia has the potential to be our highest super spreader and her closeness centrality is one. This was just a small example with a few nodes, but when we have even more nodes in a larger network, these centrality measures become even more important in helping us understand what's going on. Even with a more complex network, I can see who has the highest capacity for spreading, whether that be information or germs or other things. For more information, see these links. This has been Exploring Networks with SAS Visual Analytics. I hope it was helpful.